Good morning, Surrey Church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's an amazing, amazing feeling to be up here today. Praise God. And I see so much beautiful and handsome, familiar faces. You know who you are. <laughs> and it's truly an honor to be up here. Um, if th- those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Irvin. I am from the Abundant Life Church. It's such a great opportunity and, and privilege to be up here for the Lord. Amen. Uh, before I begin, um, just want to uh, ask everyone for their prayers. If you want to hear Jesus' voice today, you'll pray for me. If you don't, then you're going to hear my voice. And so without any uh, further delay, we're going to go into our message. Um, this message is entitled Commencement. And this is not just for the youth, just because it's youth day today. It's also for each and every one of us to take in God's message today. And so before we open God's word, we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, dear God, for the strength that you have given us each and every day. Lord, without you, we are truly nothing. And dear Father, I pray that you may be in our hearts today, O Lord, touch them, and that may we hear your voice that may we know, O Lord, that your presence is here with us today. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will uh, use me, O Lord, and uh, as a, a filthy rag, as an empty vessel such as I am, I pray, O Lord, that you may use me as your instrument, that my, that my words will be nothing, and that your words will come to the top. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your Sabbath day. And I pray that you will bless the message, O Lord, and that you will bless each and every one of us here today. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So commencement, the word commencement simply means beginning or start. These are moments such as beginning of a new year, with our new goals, our new mindsets, our new resolutions. Maybe it's the overflowing joy of emotions becoming a first-time mother and father as you see your firstborn child. Or perhaps during a school graduation as the student walks across the stage to receive their certificate or their diploma and beginning a new chapter in their lives to be independent and responsible men and women. And some of us youth here today don't really look forward to this. <laughs> It's uh, something that's, you know, a big uh, responsibility in our part that we have to uh, uh, begin. But best of all, the new beginning that we are all going to be caught up in the air with our Lord when he comes. Amen? Amen. Today we're going to look at a story of a Nazarite who possessed extraordinary physical strength. You know who this man is. And how his life reveals an important message to us today. This man is none other known than Samson. So if you have your Bibles with me, turn with me to the book of Judges in the 14th chapter. And I want us to center our focus here on a few, uh, on a few verses here. So Judges 14. I just want to say that it's uh, amazing to see so much youth in this church. God is really truly working in this church. Amen? So, Judges 14. <clears throat> now Samson was under God's watchful care, who had prepared for him a work which he was called to do. Positive and favorable conditions surrounded his life, including his God-fearing parents, to keep him closely connected to his Savior and fulfill his divine mission to lead Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Samson had a power similar to what you and I have today, and that's the power of choice. Every human being possessed of reason has power to choose the right. In fact, for everything the Lord had given us, we should be using it, sorry, it is our duty rather, to use it for his glory and his praise, amen? But unfortunately, this isn't, this isn't always so. Judges 14, we're going to be reading from verse 1. So if you could read with me. 
It says in the word of God, Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. As I have mentioned earlier, Samson had every help, every favorable condition throughout the course of his life to keep him in the path of purity, holiness, and of vigor. But because he permitted the intimacies and wild passions of his nature, the reasoning powers became perverted, debased, and his morals corrupted. Did you know that our thoughts and our imaginations belong to God? If you could turn with me to Isaiah 55, verse 8. Isaiah 55, verse 8 reads in the New King James Version, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. If the Lord possesses everything, that means everything that we possess are His. As Samson determined to follow the desires and inclinations of his heart, his life started to sweep away from man's only safeguard, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He proceeded to marry a Philistine woman, an enemy of Israel at this time, and associated in a feast with those who hated the God of Israel. Christian principles were not kept, and his alliance with the ungodly led to darken his whole life. These things still exist in our time. How many of us make such rash decisions and don't seek the counsel of God just for our pleasures and our wants to be met? How many of us, after fulfilling our selfish desires, go to bed at the end of the day feeling absolutely empty? Do you and I fall in the category who say, I'll do this because it pleaseth me well? Do we fall in this category? James 4, chapter, uh, James, sorry, rather, James 4, verse 4 says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do, not, do ye not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a friend of God, enemy of God. Therefore, whoever makes a friend of the world makes an enemy of God. Now, I just want to say one thing, just to clear, everything, just to clear this uh, verse up. It is not to say that you are, going, you are not going to talk to people outside of this church. It's saying that you should not follow their traditions or be a part of them. Because if we didn't, then there would be no need of evangelizing. Right? How I, gave my, how, how I gave my life to God was because people were praying for me and people were conversing with me. And so if you cut that connection off, you've also cut your connection with God. Had Samson obeyed the divine commands as faithfully as his parents had done, his would have been a nobler and happier destiny. But associate, association with idolaters corrupted him. That is in Patriarchs and Prophets, 562.2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Let's all turn there. It says, set your mind on the things above not on things on the earth. And in, ver in verse 3, if you add, therefore you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
Jesus desires to have, have, to have control over our thoughts today, church. Our affections and our lives and our hearts should be for him. His promise is sure in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. It doesn't say seek first self. It doesn't say seek first our wants, our desires, everything that makes us happy. We can't be the people who say, well, if this makes me happy, then God's happy. No. That is fulfilling self. That is fulfilling what Satan wants in our life. To all who seek him first, God promises wisdom. But no promise is given to those who are bent upon self. Church, today, Jesus deserves to be a center of our life. Will you allow him to be in yours today? So now a question comes to mind. How can we stay faithful and true to God through every distraction, every obstacle? How can we make sure that we are doing his will and not our own, deceiving ourselves? We can find this in the life of Joseph. I'm going to read an Ellen White, Ellen White quote to you uh, at this moment. Please, clo- uh, please pay close attention. Joseph's answer reveals the power of religious principle. He would not betray the confidence of his master on earth, and whatever the consequences, he would, he would be true to his master in heaven. Under the inspecting eye of God and holy Angels, many take liberties of which they would not be guilty in the presence of their fellow men. But Joseph's first thought was of God. When Potiphar's wife enticed Joseph to transgress the law of God, no other thought came to his mind except, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? How? How can I do this to my God who has saved me? from destruction. Is this question in your minds today? Or are we just cruising through life, thinking that we can just receive as we go? Good and evil was before Joseph, the same way it was for Samson. But instead of giving loose rein to passion, Joseph conveyed a lesson to the world. That when we put God first, He will reward us. Praise God. Samson simply failed where Joseph overcame. Is Jesus your trusted friend throughout your trials? Do you run away from Him when things get harder? You see, my brothers and sisters, God loves us too much to leave us where we are. God knows our heart, God knows our intentions, our motives, and to turn away from Him when He knows exactly what we need is keeping yourself away from salvation. I'm going to read a story uh, to you that is entitled, An Obstacle in Our Path. There was once a king who was wealthy. And he had many merchants, he had many courtiers, and people who were under him. And there was one day where there was a boulder in the middle of the road. And so he purposely put it there to see who would push it away out of the direction. And so it came that all his merchants and all his servants came through, and only went around the boulder. A few of them complained loudly that the king doesn't keep the road proper or in, or in order. Finally, a peasant came, and he was carrying all that he had in his life. And when he saw this boulder in his way, he simply put his things down, And as skinny as he was, it took him quite a while to move this boulder in the way. Finally, at some time, he 
moved it, and when he turned around, he saw a purse filled with gold, filled with all the jewelry, and there was a note as well from the king. The king simply said, thank you for taking away the obstacle in the path, and you did exactly what people didn't do. And so, really, the message in this story, the message in this story is there's many of us that fail to understand. And that is, every obstacle gives us an opportunity to improve our condition. And so, praise God for trials. Without trials, we wouldn't feel our need of God, and we would begin to think that we are self-sufficient. Is that what we want, church? So my challenge for us today is recorded in God's Word in Matthew 16, 24, and 25. Let's go there. Matthew 16, verse 24, and verse 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. As I said in the beginning, my dear fellow youth and the uh, members of Surrey Church, is Jesus the one who is dominantly controlling our life? Is he the one that's leading you? Or is there another power that's leading you? And so my challenge for you today is, for my dear fellow youth, I pray that you will continue to make God first every day. Do we pray with Him? Do we study His Word every day in the morning and at night when we end the day? When Do we make sure that self is dead? and that we are completely living for our Savior. I pray that you will continue to allow Jesus to be in your life today, and I pray that you will hear His voice as we continue to serve Him and prepare when He comes. This is my prayer. Let us pray at this moment. Father in heaven, we are your children, and there's nothing in this world, O oh Lord, that will separate us from your love. Holy Father, we are here before you today. We are asking, O oh Lord, and we are pleading for your help. We're pleading, O oh Lord, for a rot of change in our life. I ask that you will take this body, O oh Lord, and that you will cleanse it for all unrighteousness. And if we made you second above all else, O oh Lord, I pray that we will come into a full repentance and come back to you, for we know that you will accept us again and again. Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. Be with us today, O oh Lord, and you invite us to come to you, because behold, you make all things new. You give us purpose. You give us assurance. You give us hope. And Lord, why would we even dare to leave you? Be with us, O oh Father, and I pray that you will continue to humble us and help us, O oh Lord, to be under the banner of Prince Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus, so much for everything that you do for us. Bless the youth, O oh Lord. Use them. Use us to continue your work. And by God's grace and by God's will, we will all be there in that glorious day with you when you take us, Lord, in heaven. 
Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us from our sins. This I ask in the name, that sweet name, that amazing name, loving name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our friend. And we all said, 